Pride is a celebration. Pride is protest. Pride is empowering. Pride is a party. Pride is political. Pride is love. With the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion this month, internet star, journalist, and LGBTQ plus activist Raymond Braun is asking, what is the state of pride? Since Stonewall, pride has been a looking glass into the entire LGBTQ community. So I want to know what it means to young people today. He spent last June traveling around the country for his documentary, State of Pride, now available for free on YouTube. I decided to take a road trip to big cities and small towns across the country. People have been doing this for a long time. We owe it to our elders that we get to be here today. Happy Pride, everybody! There are so many closeted LGBTQ kids who have written me and said, turned off my lights, put my headphones in, and I watched a documentary because I can't go to Pride, but because I watched this documentary, I feel like I did. Braun says he relates to those closeted kids. People could clock I was gay from, you know, as early as I can we'll walk on the... Mean, look at you. <laughs> like a... I grew up in a small, rural, conservative town in Northwest Ohio. I didn't see any openly gay men any trans people, any non-binary people growing up. And it was the internet that was my connection to learning about my community. When I say that I didn't know how to go into the closet, I think this demonstrates that. I mean, hello. Braun would go on to study the use of social media to create communities and social change at Stanford University. He then landed a job in YouTube's marketing department, quickly proposing a way the platform could elevate its LGBTQ plus content. I created this hashtag, proud to love, which was all about people sharing who and what they were proud to love within the context of the debate for marriage equality. And it really caught fire. That hashtag brought in millions of views. It's massive success raising Braun's profile and landing him a spot on Forbes 30 Under 30 in 2014. That was really my first foray into understanding how powerful social media can be and communicating positive messages and coalescing a community around a message of empowerment and support and education. All right, here we go. He ended up leaving his job to start his own YouTube channel, which he uses to connect with the LGBTQ plus community. His documentary, a natural extension of that mission. What was like your first recollection of Pride or the first time you became aware of it? Um, I think it was when I started like coming out to myself. I would watch YouTube videos of coming out stories, Pride parades. I remember one of the first videos that I saw that I was like, oh my God, there's like a lot of gay people in the world. Like, it's not just a small amount. Braun says he was most impacted by the small town pride celebrations where the turnout can be low, but the risks of attending can be high. Well, I think it would be cool if some of the LGBTQ folks who live in big cities, as you're planning your summer tourism, why don't you go to a pride that's a little under the radar? Pride events in small towns across America owe their existence to those who risked it all 50 years ago at the Stonewall Uprising, an event that sparked a movement explored in ABC's docuseries 1969. It was a glorious place to be because we could be openly who we were. The Stonewall Inn in the West Village of New York City had become a refuge for the city's LGBT community. It had no license because you couldn't serve alcohol to a known homosexual in New York because you would probably lose your license. The police knew it was illegal because there was an agreement that every few weeks they'd come in and raid the place. On June 28, 1969, one of those raids would take an unexpected turn. There's maybe 30 or 40 people gathered in the street. Another policeman came out and said something to one of the queens, and one of the queens screamed something back at him, and that's where it all began. Cans were thrown, windows were broken, the police called for reinforcement, and it got a little out of hand. We were fighting, and it was for our lives. We all decided to break off the shackles of 2,000 years of oppression. It was out loud, proud and gay! People see pride parades as a backdrop for a really cute Instagram photo, and they're not thinking about the history, the activism, the protest, and the generations of LGBTQ trailblazers who made it possible for us to celebrate the way that we do today. Earlier this month, an apology decades in the making from the New York City Police Department. 
The actions taken by the NYPD were wrong, plain and simple. The actions and the laws were discriminatory and oppressive, and for that, I apologize. That was a step in the direction of healing for a lot of people. But there are still many in the community who do not feel safe. I was at work and this guy, he's like, I'm not going to be served by this him, she, or whatever it is. I learned from early age that it's not okay for me to be different. They almost killed me. Many LGBTQ youth continue to be bullied pervasively in 2019. Trans women of color who are still being murdered and discriminated against. Police say three transgender women have been targeted in the past seven months. If you are a black trans woman, you could be facing discrimination and oppression for being black, for being a woman, and for being transgender. The data is there. It's no secret that, you know, black trans women are being murdered at a very high rate. As long as LGBTQ people are facing any form of discrimination, pride is still relevant. I've always thought about how powerful it is for young LGBTQ kids, particularly those who are closeted, or to be able to see people that they identify with on television. And I know that there is a kid who's sitting at the kitchen table right now while his parents are watching this exact news segment. And I'm wishing you a happy pride and you're who is on my mind while I'm marching. To see the full episode of ABC's 1969 Generation Woodstock, stream it on the ABC app or go to abcnews.com. Also, be sure to tune in to World Pride events on ABC News Live Sunday morning at 11, 10 central. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.